Hello. So in this video, we're going to look at the functions and the properties of lipids. So the first thing we can work out is that a membrane, which is made out of lipids, delimits the cell. So it separates uh, the cell and its contents from everything else. It also forms a barrier to movement in and out of the cell. We've learned since key stage three that a cell membrane controls the movement of substances in and out of the cell. And it does that with the help of this um, lipid bilayer. It also allows the embedding of membrane proteins. So you'll remember in your um, mo fluid mosaic model of a protein, of a, of a membrane, that there are proteins embedded in it. And that allows the movement of these molecules, such as cholesterol. And finally, you need to know that it gives the membrane fluidity, allowing it to change shape. Now, that's really, really useful. Um, more fluid membranes also tend to contain more unsaturated fats. So it's good to make that link. OK, do um, rewind and go back to copy down those notes. So now we're going to look at the nature of lipids. Well, we know that a lipid contains lots of carbon and hydrogen bonds. And inside those bonds, it's storing energy. So with lipids, there's a large store of energy and a long-term store of energy. And this is in contrast to the carbohydrates, which are a quick store of energy. During respiration, these bonds are also broken to release lots of energy. And if you compare um, a lipid molecule to a glucose molecule to a protein molecule, a lot more energy is released from a lipid molecule. If you take gram for gram, the same amount of um, carbohydrates, proteins or lipids, the carbohydrates by far give off the most energy. Then... The hydrophobic, the water-hating nature of lipids makes them useful in waterproofing organisms. So because it's repelling the water just to kind of flow right off it. Um, and that's why a lot of birds preen themselves and they've got this oily gland which secretes oil over it. And that just helps to um, repel any water from their feathers. Lipids are also good insulators, both of electricity and thermally so we think about um, the whale as an example and electrically that's going to come in quite handy um, when we look at some um, electric rays and electric sharks which are quite interesting um, if you want to research that further they also have a low density does lipid molecules so in aquatic animals it helps to give them buoyancy it helps them to float and again why it is so useful with the whales Lipids are soluble in organic solvents. If I put it into alcohol, it will dissolve in it, but it won't dissolve in water. And so it means that it doesn't interfere with different reactions, um, but it also travels easily in the body. It says they're waterproofing, as lipids are water repellent because they're hydrophobic. I think we've mentioned that already. And insulating, again, um, this is, I probably should have added these points together. Good heat and electrical ins insulators because they are water soluble, um, water soluble substances like charge ions cannot get through the polar lipid layer. Okay, you can tidy that up for me a little bit. Okay, so pause the video and copy that down so you should be able to condense it to six bullet points okay so here's a question for you to try molecules can be represented in different ways figure one shows a molecule of fatty acid it shows the different atoms that make up the molecule complete the diagram by naming the atoms labeled A and B. So, because there's only two of the dark ones at the end, what do you think that's going to be? Um, have a discussion and also answer, this molecule is a saturated fatty acid. Explain the meaning of the word saturated. Pause the video, discuss it with your neighbor, and then check in and see if you got the right answer.
Okay, so A is oxygen and B is going to be the carbon because there's um, the C double bond O and then the OH there. And it's a saturated molecule. Saturated means it is saturated with hydrogen, so it has as many hydrogens as possible rather than having double carbon-carbon bonds or double bonds between the carbon atoms. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. How many molecules are produced when a triglyceride molecule is completely hydrolyzed? And part two, many large biological molecules are polymers. Explain why triglycerides are not polymers. Pause the video, have a discussion with your neighbor, and then check in and see if you get the same answer. Okay, how did you do? I really want you to stretch yourself in these conversations, okay? So, how many molecules are produced when triglyceride molecules completely hydrolyzed? Well, it's made up of the glycerol and the three fatty acids, so that ends up being four molecules in total. And why are triglycerides not polymers? Because it's not many of the same repeating units as you get with cellulose having loads and loads and loads of um, glucose molecules joined together. So it is not considered a polymer. Okay, now these are taken from some past paper questions. What I'd like you to do is jot down the answers and then we'll go back and look at, the question, uh, at your answers and compare them. So the first question, lipoprotein, lipase, is a biological catalyst and it's involved in the hydrolysis of triglycerides. So that's when you use water to break it down, which is the opposite of condensation. For each of the statements, put a cross in the box that corresponds to the correct statement. A catalyst, is it A, decreases the rate of reaction by increasing the activation energy, B, decreases the rate of the reaction by reducing the activation energy. C, increases the rate of the reaction by increasing the activation energy. Or D, increases the rate of the reaction by reducing the activation energy. Okay, for the next question, a type of bond found in glyceride, triglyceride, is... Is it A, being broken and water being formed? B, being broken and water being used? C, being formed and water being formed? Or D, being formed and water being used? Okay, gut feel which answer is that. Right, let's move on. A triglyceride is made from, is it A, one glycerol and one fatty acid, one glycerol and three fatty acids, C, three glycerols and one fatty acid, or D, three glycerols and three fatty acids? And question four, a type of bond found in a triglyceride is it A, an ester bond, B, a glycosidic bond, C, a hydrogen bond, or D, a phosphodiester bond? Okay, have a look at this question. Pause the video. It's for two marks, so you've got two minutes to answer the question and then give it your best go. This is just seeing how you can analyze data from a table. Okay, and for your final questions as part of this question, name the type of drug that could be given to people with this mutation to reduce the risk of developing cardiovascular disease and state one health risk associated with using this type of drug. So pause the video, and then we're going to purple pen our answers when you are ready. Okay, so for the first question, 
um, a catalyst increases the rate of the reaction by reducing the activation energy and a type of bond found in a glyceride is being broken and water is being used. Bit of a clumsy question, I agree. Next one, a triglyceride is made from one glycerol and three fatty acids and the type of bond found in a triglyceride is of course an ester bond. Now, this is a little bit blurry, I apologize for this. Two reasons why the information in the table does not support this suggestion. Now, there's four points. You could put any three of these. You could say that the total cholesterol levels in people with the mutation are not higher than the people without the mutation. So you're comparing the numbers over here. You could say that LDLs, looking at this one, LDL cholesterol levels in people with the mutation, so that's the 111, are not higher than the people without the mutation. Or, if you focused on the HDL, you could say HDL cholesterol levels in people with the mutation, so there's 49, are not lower than people without the mutation. So you can see how while these questions do seem a little bit strange, actually all it's asking you to do is just to um, study this table and see what is this table trying to show you. So actually it's really easy marks. And if you actually um, use numbers in your answers, um, you could get a, a mark for doing that too. Right, so the last question, and this is probably from your general knowledge from GCSE, the type of drug given to people, um, who have this issue um, of cholesterol issues is statins and the health risk. Now, <laughs> the health risk, look how many health risks there are. It could cause muscle pain, liver damage or failure, joint aches and pains, noise, nausea, constipation, diarrhea, vomiting, um, flatulence, which is farting, loss of appetite, so any one of those, kidney damage, cataracts, diabetes, um, skin inflammation, respiratory problems, headaches, depression, insomnia. So gosh, um, that is quite something, but it's that versus um, having an incredibly high blood pressure and um, developing cardiovascular disease. So make sure you look after your blood pressure and your cholesterol levels. So once this is done, I'd like you to... Um, just remember a test from key stage four. How do you test for a lipid? You mix it with some alcohol, ethanol. You allow it to um, set, settle. You decant off the clear surface layer of ethanol. And um, you should have an emulsion, like a solid forming um, in the water. And that tells you that a lipid is present. Also, if you wipe it on something like filter paper and you get that oily spot, that is another indication that a lipid is present. So if you do that with a pe peanut, if you're not allergic to peanuts, you'll see that oily mark that it leaves behind. So um, I've put homework on show my homework. Uh, make sure that you update your revision cards and keep working brilliantly. Well done.